What if I told you that the future of cities is not further up in the sky, but deep down in the ocean? You might think that the idea of underwater cities like the lost city of Atlantis is plain impossible, but by the end of the video, you might just change your mind. Today, we dive deep into the fascinating world of underwater construction. From bridges, wharfs, piers, and docks, to research stations, oil rigs, and railroad tunnels. How do they do it? Add to that the latest fads in underwater construction, like luxury hotel suites to submerged nightclubs, and you're left truly speechless at just exactly how are these amazing structures built underwater. For today, we focus on two key aspects of building underwater. Number one, what special materials are used to make underwater structures? And number two, what specific techniques do builders use to construct massive concrete structures? First up, building something underwater means that whatever material you use, whether it's steel, concrete, or glass, must be able to withstand water and not corrode over time, especially salt water. In most cases, a special type of high-strength cement called Portland cement is used. Microsilica present in this kind of cement reduces the permeability of the concrete. You see, the goal here is to make sure that the concrete does not lose its cement to the water. This kind of hydraulic cement is able to harden even underwater, reacting with water to form a hard, solid mass. But what about underwater structures made of glass? From the underwater suite of the Dubai Atlantic Hotel, the world's only seven-star hotel, to the Itha undersea restaurant in Maldives, built 16 feet below sea level, these glass underwater structures are sure breathtaking. But you're probably wondering one thing. Wouldn't ordinary glass shatter when exposed to the high pressure from the turbulence found underwater? But you see, underwater structures use a special type of acrylic glass that tends to flex rather than break in the face of intense water pressure. So once you've identified the right kind of water-resistant materials, it's time for the actual underwater construction. At its core, building underwater has one goal, to not actually build underwater. That's right, if you thought you'd actually have divers hammering nails on the seabed, think again. In the construction industry, this is called dewatering and includes a variety of equipment and techniques used for building in waterlogged areas because let's be honest, it's nearly impossible to actually build in water. First up, we have the cofferdams. Cofferdams are one of the most common ways of building structures such as dams or bridges. As enclosed steel structures, cofferdams create a watertight fence. Once lowered, powerful pumps are used to pump out the water, exposing the waterbed at a depth at which a wall can be driven into the ground that keeps water from seeping to the other side of the wall. This watertight wall plays an important role in protecting construction crews, materials, and equipment. They also make sure that your structures are ready for contact with the water. Remember, building directly underwater involves complicated tools, skilled divers, and tremendous risks. For this reason, cofferdams have largely been replaced by a new, more advanced construction technique, piles. Today, piles are the most efficient technique of underwater construction. Piles are made of steel, but they have a partially hollow interior. Barges or pontoons are used to tow these piles and lower them into the construction site. While some pieces can be lowered using their own weight, others might need that extra support by loading them with weights such as sandbags. In most cases, a hydraulic hammer using water instead of oil is used to drive the piles underwater. Thanks to advanced technology, the way hammers interact with the pile soil system can actually be modeled before driving the piles and then monitored during installation to control driving stresses. But enough about these massive powerful hammers and back to driving piles. Once the piles are settled on the seafloor, a tube is used to fill the inside with concrete, displacing the water previously inside the pile. Remember, this special type of concrete is able to harden even when completely surrounded by water, giving us a steel-reinforced concrete pillar with no water inside. As of now, driven piles are one of the most cost-effective ways to build foundational elements of underwater buildings and were used to anchor Apple's stunningly partially submerged store at Marina Bay Sands in Singapore. 
Another method used to avoid dewatering is the use of drilled shafts. Here, engineers use special equipment and techniques to excavate holes, install reinforcing steel, and then fill them with concrete to build a strong foundation that is essentially watertight. In other cases, gravity-based structures built in dry docks or on land are designed to use their own weight to remain stable on the seabed before being floated to the final location and then settled on the waterbed by ballasting or anchoring. This technique is particularly used for making railroad tunnels, such as the Femarn Tunnel in Europe, where 89 massive sections of concrete were built in a temporary factory on the Danish side of the tunnel and subsequently immersed underwater. If you want to learn more about this mega tunnel in the heart of Europe, check the video in the description below. Well, there you have it. From lakes and rivers to harbors and oceans, humans have managed to build amazing structures in every kind of water body. Whether it's looking for oil, creating piers for ships, or building actual living spaces underwater, thanks to special materials, advanced technologies, and the latest construction techniques, it may just be possible to build a modern city of Atlantis after all. However, underwater cities, at least right now, have a cost that makes them unreasonable not to mention their potential impact on marine life and environment. At Elite Originals, we love exploring all things underwater, from massive underwater tunnels to nuclear submarines. Check out related videos to learn more about the fascinating world underwater. And since you're here, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out.